Well, initially Salome, you know, when, when Al said to me, let's go and do Salome, I honestly, it, it wasn't my favorite play. I loved all, all the other plays at Oscar Wilde because it was witty, it was funny, it was interesting, something different. That I, I just loved it, the humor and so forth and the wit. There was nothing witty and funny really in, in, about Salome. It, was, it looked like quite personal to, 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 to Oscar Wilde. And, and so I, at the beginning, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't in love with it. It's just the fact that Al said to me, why don't you get involved with me and we'll go through the whole process. It was one of those things that you slowly kind of began to realize, wow, what a great writer Oscar Wilde was and what he wrote and so forth, the characters. And slowly I began to fall in love with it and the process. And, and, uh, and look, ultimately it's, it's, it's about a, a revenge. Reality is about a revenge of, 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 of one woman scorned, I guess. And plus the fact that how he promised King Herod, he promised what he should have not. And at the end he lost his own head as well, kind of by giving, uh, you know, John the Baptist on a silver tray to, to, to Salome. So it's got a lot of elements that you kind of learn and, and you realize it could happen today. It happens to a lot of people. It happens to a lot of people who are married and divorced. So it's kind of got that, that, that thin red line. Four years ago, we came here to do some uh, footage with, with Al. You know, he came to Trinity College, he was giving an award, and we kind of, you know, this explored Oscar Wilde's, you know, his home and so forth. We always said, like, if there's one place, we're going to come back. And to show the film, it's going to be Dublin, it's going to be Ireland. So it's a special for us. This is the most important uh, festival for us, really, because it's the home of Oscar. And, and, uh, and of course, Marilyn Holland, his grandson, is here with us, uh, you know, also helping us to promote the film, and he's part of the film. Uh, so it, it means a lot to us from the beginning. We, we felt that this is the place that we have to hopefully launch it for the people of Ireland and for and, and, and Al who loves, loves, loves the Irish and loves, you know, the you know, writing of Oscar and of course James Joyce's and goes on and on. Yeah, well, from the beginning, I mean, I worked with Al before on The Merchant of Venice. Then we had a screenplay and we had a director, of course, and, and a schedule and a budget and a delivery. In this case, we didn't have any of that. There was no script, no budget, no delivery, none of that kind of stuff. So it was very much a, a, as an as a active, uh, so-called uh, passionate project from Al and, of course, from myself, where we kind of teamed up and said, look, why don't we work together? So in, in this, in this uh, respect, uh, you know, this picture was completely hands-on with Pacino and myself. And he was very generous, very generous, to actually give me the artistic license as a filmmaker. Otherwise, it would, it would have been really tough. And he wouldn't have it any other way. So the way he works is he gives everybody artistic license, but it was just a joy to be able to work with him 24 four hours a day for, for four years almost. And, and that's why I call this movie, not, not my second movie with Pacino, but I call it 10 movies in one. Well, I, I always said from the beginning, you know, I have, a, I, have a, I have a passion, but I don't have a vision for this yet. So let's discover what we're going to go, where we're going to go. But he always said to me, it's going to be a collage. There are going to be a number of layers coming at you. It's going to be like a cocktail. So, so in many ways, it's, it's, you're right. We can't brand it as a pure, complete documentary, or nor is a complete film. But it's, it's got that element. So it's, it, it, it is tough. That's, that's why we, it makes it a lot harder for us to be able to go out there and say to the public, uh, hey, this, this is just a pure documentary. But it really isn't. It's a docudrama. But the best way to really describe it, perhaps, is an Al Pacino film. And you know, if you're a fan of Al Pacino film as a director, you look at Looking for Richard, then you follow up and see what he's uh, done here. Well, I, I was actually at that particular time when Al said to me, let's go make a, a, a documentary a movie of uh, Salome the play. They hadn't cast uh, the girl Salome yet. So I had no idea because at that time, Robert Fox was producing the play itself. Uh, so, so they actually discovered, in fact, Al discovered Jessica uh, by, by uh, you know, reading her and uh, she was auditioning and of course she blew everybody away with her performance during the audition and, and, and uh, the rest is history because Al is incredibly generous with uh, screening the film prior to uh, being finished. And we had a number of screenings from the moment we had a rough cut in the last two or three years to various top directors, uh, John Madam or Terry Malick, all these guys, all these great directors who 
finally end up, including Michael Mann, finally end up hiring her. They saw her in this piece, and hence she got seven other movies. Uh, and now she's, she is who she is. She's a great actress. Well, I was very spoiled, you know, when I went to film school, I graduated with my buddy Danny Houston. My first mentor was John Houston, so when you hang out with somebody like him as a director, you're kind of bound to meet all the top directors. You know, I was only a kid, 20, 22 years old, but I got to know him for six, seven years. And then when you work with people like Pacino and Brando, you get a little spoiled, I have to say. However, there are a lot of great directors out there. I mean, I love to work with Soderbergh, I love to work with Thomas Anderson, I love to, to work with... Uh, uh, you know, directors who actually even leave the film school because I know there's a lot of talent out there who, like Jessica Chastain, was, dis was discovered by Al out of the blue. So I think it's all about ultimately the script. But once you have the script, you pick and choose a director. But there's plenty of great, great directors out there. Coppola, I'd love to see if we can get a Francis Coppola. Well, I mean, uh, the, 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 there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of stories, but there's one that I never forget. Two years into filming a war at Salome, and we still kind of didn't know which direction we we're going to go. And, and it's very hard when, as a producer, filmmaker, that you're working with a fellow filmmaker and uh, artist, great genius, and icon, Al, that it really doesn't tell you more or less where we're going until you kind of discover as time goes by. It gets very frustrating for producers. So once I said to him, look, you're, you're giving me a lot of, you know, you know, you're giving me a heart attack. He said to me, no, I'm not giving you a heart attack, I'm giving you art attack. So you're gonna, <laughs> so that, that, that's the memory I always tell everybody because at that point I realized, you know what, he's got his own pace, he's got his own style, he's got his own kind of uh, direction. And, and that, uh, that kind of uh, woke me up that, uh, that, okay, fine. It looks like, you know, he's putting me in the right, right venue for this.